Hi guys, it's Dr. Diamond again, and I just wanted to drop in a brief video lecture to talk about the issue of causation. Now the lecture talks about nomenthetical research, which is basically research where you're attempting to prove causation. What exactly does that mean? Now in week one, there were two very important terms thrown at you. They were dependent variable and independent variable. Generally, your dependent variable is the one that you are attempting to measure or check the outcome. That is usually indicated as Y. You also have an independent variable. An independent variable is the variable that you are intentionally manipulating and changing. That's usually referred to as X. So you manipulate X in order to examine the change in Y. Pretty straightforward stuff. However, what does this have to do with causation? It's pretty simple and straightforward. First, in order to prove that X causes Y, you have to show that 1. X precedes Y in time. So X occurs before Y changes. You have to prove that there's a relationship between X and Y. There's some type of correlation that means as X goes up, Y goes up, or as Y goes up, X goes down. Simple correlation. When you manipulate X, Y will fluctuate. The next thing you have to demonstrate is that X and only X is responsible for the change in Y. That's where the hard part comes in with causation. Causation basically means you have to prove that only X, which is your independent variable, is responsible for the change in Y, the dependent variable you are measuring. Sometimes there can appear to be a relationship between X and Y because there's some other variable that you have not been able to measure or control for interfering in that relationship. This is called spuriousness. A good example of this would be the observation that homicide rates tend to go up in months when people consume more ice cream. So does the consumption of ice cream cause homicides to go up? Well, you could argue that it potentially does. If you look at it strictly from ice cream, if we bring the consumption up, means that the homicide rate goes up. There does appear to be a correlation between X, ice cream consumption, and Y, which would be homicide rates. However, you also have to look at the issue of when do most people tend to increase their ice cream consumption. That would be in very hot months. Well, we also find that when the temperature goes up, so does the homicide rate. So is it the consumption of ice cream that causes the homicide rate to go up, or is it the presence of excess heat that causes the homicide rate to go up? When does it tend to be hot? In the summer months, when you tend to have children out of school, What's the highest age range for homicide? Basically, violent crime peaks at the age of 18. So that's a pretty good indicator that there are many variables impacting the homicide rate beyond temperature and ice cream consumption. However, if you don't know what those variables are, you may mistakenly assume that there is actually a relationship between eating ice cream and the homicide rate going up. Causation is really difficult to prove with social science research because you can't put human beings in a laboratory and control everything in their environment. In the hard sciences like biology and physiology, it is a lot easier because you can control for variables beyond X. Basically, a spurious relationship is one where you mistakenly assume that X, the change in manipulation in X, is producing a change in Y. However, there could be a P factor and an H factor and a V factor out there 
that you have not taken into account. So instead of x, your change in y may actually be produced by that f or that h or that v factor that you have not been able to find or measure or control for. Thanks.